The border crisis and illegal immigration was one of the top issues voters said they wanted Donald Trump back at the White House. And now we're getting a clearer picture of how the borders will look after the Biden-Harris administration allowed millions of illegal migrants into the country over the past four years. Joining us now to discuss is Mark Morgan, the former acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection and visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Mark, good morning to you. Trump's promised a closed border and mass deportations with an early focus of removing illegal immigrants who have committed crimes. What does this plan look like? And what about those sanctuary cities that do not cooperate? First, Jim, good morning. It, it, that's just going to be part of a multi-layer strategy. They're really going to focus on three elements. One is the security of our physical border to stop the bleeding of illegal aliens, crimes, uh, uh, criminals and drugs, and now security threats from pouring in. The second element, as you said, is going to be interior enforcement. So those that do get through our frontline defenses, uh, they're going to have to know that they're not going to remain here, that they're going to be removed. And the last leg of that is going to be to go after the cartels. As far as the physical border, we're going to implement the same policies that he did during his first uh, Trump administration that were found to be very successful. And that's going to be really, it's going to fall under the umbrella of consequences and deterrence. And we're going to use policy and resources to do that, like the Remain in Mexico program, ending catch and release, as well as giving technology and personnel, and of course, constructing the wall. As far as interior enforcement, Jan, it's, it, it wasn't so serious. It's the hysteria and fear mongering is almost laughable. We've been removing illegal aliens for the past four or five decades. Under the Clinton administration, we removed 12 million illegal aliens, and they've been doing it ever since. ICE ERO does this every single day, including under the Biden Harris administration. The only difference is what I would suggest is we're going to induce a what I call a whole of government steroids to just increase the magnitude and capability of those removals. And at the end of the day, sanctuary cities. They have to end if we're going to be successful. And to everybody watching, the, the common sense aspect of sanctuary cities is you have a criminal illegal alien in your city. They've committed another crime. And what your leadership is saying is we're, it's OK to release them back in your community rather than working with ICE to remove them. That's insane. That's going to end. So how can you force this? Would you withhold funding from these sanctuary cities? Yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, I'm not an expert in the, the policy that can be done, but that's just the basic common sense uh, strategy. It's kind of like the highway, right? National speed limit. Uh, they're they're going to say, look, states, you're going to do this because this is a common sense public safety issue. And if you don't, we're going to use every capability within the law to force you to apply this common sense strategy in, in sanctuary cities. So I hope the Trump administration uses every tool at their disposal, every lawful tool at their disposal to once and for all in sanctuary cities. The former head of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Tom Homan, now the new border czar, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, expected to be confirmed as Homeland Security Secretary. What can we expect from both Homan and Noem, and what would you do day one if you were in charge? First, Jan, I, I think the selection itself is very important and when it was made. Uh, first of all, he created a former borders czar position when under the pre previous administration, that was held by the vice president of the United States. So that's sending a strong message of the equivalency there. And then he actually nominated and selected the border czar before the secretary of state, before the secretary's treasury, before the secretary of defense. That's sending a very powerful message how important it is for this president and that what he was saying on the campaign wasn't just rhetoric to, to get his base fired up, is that he's really going to carry forth with what he promised he was going to do. And of course, Tom Holman is, 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 a, is an obvious pick for that. Now, now you know, Governor uh, uh, Noam, she was a little uh, a pick, I think, from the left field. She's going to have a tough job in front of her. That's a big department. But I think if surrounded by the right people, uh, they can be very successful. And on day one, it's pretty straightforward. Declare a national emergency in the use of the CBP-1 app, in the unlawful use of parole, start building the wall, reinstitute the remaining the Mexico program and safe third country agreements and of course issue a mandate that ICE conducts the largest removal operation we've seen that can be done on day one. Very quickly you had a significant role with the FBI as well as former acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection in, in two different administrations. Over the past four years the GOP has said the FBI and the DOJ have been politicized and weaponized to go after government rivals. We saw the story that just broke last night the home of the founder of Polymarket had been raided he has a betting platform that predicted a Trump win, and he says this was obvious political retribution by the outgoing administration. Do you think the FBI needs an overhaul, and what do you make of some of these FBI investigations, Mark? Yes, clearly there has to be change in the FBI, and there has to be significant change. 
there is unquestioned that the majority of the public have lost trust in the Department of Justice and the FBI. And the leader, look, I still believe that the majority of rank and file are still in the FBI wanting to do the right thing for the right reasons. I believe this is a leadership issue. How far down in the chain of command is yet to be seen, but that's the fact. And this leadership has chosen, rather than just be honest with the American people and address their concern, they have developed a, a bunker-like mentality, and at times a bizarre approach to actually attack and go after the naysayers, go after the people that have questioned them in a defiant, again, bizarre uh, ways at times. I've seen Christopher Ray get angry when they question him over January 6th. I just didn't understand that. Instead of just uh, uh, you know addressing and talking about those concerns. So at the end of the day, if they're going to regain the, the America's trust in their agency, which they need, there's going to have to be significant change. At the bottom line, they just have to get back to the basics to protect the American people. Former Acting Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection and Visiting Fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Mark Morgan. Great seeing you, sir. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks.